Welcome to the Power of Choice Differentiation Through Student Agency. If you have not been to one of our GW webinars before, they are a very fast, quick pace uh, for 30 minutes. You'll also need a smart device, device so you can uh, scan some QR codes, participate in some polls. This uh, webinar is highly dependent on participant uh, participation to really be successful. So we're excited to engage with you throughout the presentation. All right, so first up, think about a dream vacation. What is your dream vacation? Hold that thought. Now, let's take it a little deeper. What does that dream vacation look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? You have that picture in your head, you know what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like. Now, what personal values does it connect with for you? All right, you have a thought, you have a few ideas, and you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with differentiation and student agency, right? We're going to get there. So how does this all relate to differentiation and student agency, right? Choice. Choice is kind of this fundamental idea that impacts our sense of autonomy, our sense of agency. It empowers us to shape our lives, to make decisions that align with our values, and to experience a greater sense of control over our circumstances. However, the paradox of choice might suggest that too much freedom can lead to indecision and dissatisfaction. So making those choices can also have a significant psychological and emotional benefits for us, including uh, self-esteem, motivation, increased satisfaction. Also, our ability to make informed choices is closely linked to success as it allows us to pursue opportunities that align with our goals and strengths. So when we think about this dream vacation, how it relates to our personal values and the idea of choice, choice plays a crucial role in education in empowering our students to take ownership of their learning, to develop critical thinking skills because it provides students with opportunities to make choices and we as educators can foster a more engaging and meaningful learning experience. So today, in our 30 minutes, we are going to think about, explore ideas of how we can increase the understanding of student agency. We're gonna develop some differentiation strategies. We're gonna share, hopefully you'll gain one or two that you can take back. And then we're gonna also talk about just ways that we can enhance student engagement overall. So let's start with this the idea of student agency, right? So we know that student agency can enhance motivation, engagement, and critical thinking skills, like we just said. But when students are given the opportunity to make choices and take ownership of their learning, they are more likely to feel invested in the process of learning. This leads to increased motivation, and it can also lead to greater engagement and deeper understanding of our content and material. Also, student agency encourages students to develop those critical thinking skills that they're going to need as they um, evaluate different options, make informed decisions, and justify their choices. However, as you can see on the screen, there are also some challenges to uh, student agency. So we can think about this as some concerns about managing student choice, ensuring equity, and maintaining classroom order. But these can always be overcome by thinking about careful planning, effective communication, and supportive classroom environment. Okay, so do we have a common thread that we're starting to weave about choice and student agency? Let's add the next layer. As we're going out through this next section of the webinar, this is where it's a great time to share. So if one of these ideas sticks out to you or you have used a certain strategy, feel free to drop it in the chat so that we can all learn with and from each other. All right, 
So when we think about differentiation, differentiated teaching and instruction is just an approach where we tailor instruction to meet the diverse needs of our students. This can be done in four ways, content, process, product, and environment. So by varying the content that we're presented, we can ensure that all students have access to appropriate information. When we think about the process, that refers to activities and strategies used to learn the material, way students engage with the material. Differentiating that process allows students to engage with the content in different ways that best suits their style and their abilities. When we think about product, that often is referred to the final output or some type of demonstration of understanding. Differentiating this product provides students with the options for demonstrating how their knowledge in other ways can align with their strengths and interests. So allowing them to show their understanding in different ways. And then finally that environment, this is like encompasses the physical and the psychological setting in which learning occurs. So by differentiating this environment, we can create more inclusive and supportive learning spaces for all of our students and learners. So with that, this is when you're going to pick up your trusty smart device. You're going to scan that QR code. I'll be dropping the link in the chat momentarily. When you get there, it's going to be a form and it's going to have an opportunity for you to type in your response. So it's going to ask you which differentiation strategies you've used or that you like to use. You're going to type in your response in the box, hit submit. Once you hit submit, there'll be a blue link that pops up on the next screen where you can submit another response. We're using Microsoft Form so that everyone can share their ideas collectively. And I'll give you just a moment to scan that QR code using the camera app on your smart device or to click on the link in the chat and share differentiation strategies you currently use or ones that you've heard of and you might want to use. So with that, let's jump on over to our strategies. There we go. This is the box that will pop up. You can type in your strategies, hit submit, and you can submit as many as you would like. So let's talk about some of the strategies that are currently popping up. So we have some that says I've used all fours, but primarily you differentiate with content and process in your first semester of anatomy and phys physiology. Um, it, they differentiate uh, via the environment, the process, the product, the process again. Uh, we have some that also come in, they use group seating. So that's probably environment. Uh, the way students can interact, uh, flexible assessments. So varying that product that we're using, um, flexible assessments, leveled activities. So kind of varying the content as well with those leveled, leveled activities. I think of that, about that as like tiered activities. Uh, we'll go into that in just a moment as well. Uh, looks like a lot of people differentiate using content and process with various worksheets with different levels of difficulty, some with answers available, some without exactly. Uh, looks like we differentiate using the process. So I see process a lot. So it looks like we're all differentiating using the process um, of learning. So let's jump back over to our slide deck and we'll look at some other ones. Of oh, student choice in review activities, absolutely. So hopefully you picked up on a few strategies that either confirmed what you're doing or gave you some new ideas of ways that you could differentiate in other ways for your uh, students and learning environments. So with that, let's talk about a little bit more of the practical side of this. So what does this really look like uh, in our classrooms, right? So we know that there's the four areas and we know that providing support and guidance is really essential for helping our students navigate these differentiated activities and to help them make informed choices. So we as educators can offer individual guidance, we can offer small group instruction, we can offer online resources to support our students as they're working. Some ways that we might think about differentiating content is thinking about those tiered activities um, I worked with a personalized learning program and all of their learning activities were differentiated or tiered. They called them mild, medium, and spicy based on Texas salsa 
uh, levels. And so you could have activities that were mild, medium, or spicy, and students could choose which activity they wanted to complete. Uh, in the CTE world, we already do this by providing those real-world connections, those lab activities, those um, internships. Our students are already participating in that. That is already differentiation at its best. Uh, when we think about the process of learning, choice boards, um, writing students' choice and activities. We think about flexible grouping. Think about learning stations. Even for adults, you can uh, implement learning stations. Then when we think about the last two, a product and environment, you know, it's important to create those positive and supportive environments where our learners feel comfortable asking questions, seeking help, assessing students, uh, their learning in a differentiated classroom kind of requires a variety of methods. Um, so really we can have our traditional quizzes and tests, but we can have all alternative projects, presentations, and portfolios. So that, thinking about that product, uh, choice of product, how they show mastery. Uh, they can have tiered products. Rubrics are a great way that you're probably already differentiating in your classroom. Um, and also the environment, flexible seating, collaborative learning spaces, uh, personalized learning plans. In CTE, we already have a lot of this going on because a lot of times in our classes, we're going to have classroom settings and we're going to have lab settings as well. So we're already starting to differentiate our environment just based on our CTE content. So if you have any questions, thoughts, or chats, don't feel free to drop it in the chat um, as we're going throughout this. If you have a favorite one, we'd love to hear those as well. Now, as we start to think about this, you know, one way that you can differentiate also is through some open-ended questions in terms of assessment, right? Open-ended questions are really powerful tools for fostering creativity, critical thinking, and engagement. These types of questions encourage students to go beyond simple recall or explore their understanding in more depth. So by posing open-ended questions that require our students to think critically and express their ideas creatively, we can simulate higher order thinking skills and promote deeper levels of learning. Additionally, to tie this back into student agency, Accepting a wide range of responses allows our students to feel empowered, to share their unique perspectives, and encourages a more inclusive classroom environment. So as an example of this, uh, think about the few slides that we've gone through so far today on differentiation. We talked about the student agency part, layering it on with the four types of differentiation of content, product, process, and environment. Think about one way that you could provide the power of choice by differentiation through student agency. And then you're going to type that response into the chat box. And let's see what some of the responses are that pop up in the chat box. How can you provide the power of choice in your learning environment by differentiation through student agency? Let's see what some of our ideas are that pop up in the chat box. I'll give you just a moment to type your response because there's a little delay uh, from when you hit submit and when I see it on my end. So let's see what's going to come in the chat box. All right, we have a few responses starting to populate. If you're still typing, please type away, finish your thoughts. Um, some coming in are talking about the giving uh, different uh, options for presentations, such as PowerPoint, portfolio, teach back, exactly. Some other ones talk about deciding what type of weld they want to do. Absolutely, so giving them a choice. A uh, choice to join a laboratory group when each group is focusing on content or process, and then the freedom to try something else. So those are definitely some ways that you can provide the power of choice. Uh, Joseph's talking about how he lets his student um, be the shop foreman for the week at a time. So giving them that choice to be the foreman, uh, to 
experience some differentiation, have some student agency there as well. Let's see what other ideas we have coming in. These are great. Also, if you see an idea in the chat, I don't know if you know this, but you can hover over it with your mouse and give it a thumbs up if you like that idea or that's a great idea. We always appreciate that positive feedback as we're learning with and from each other. Let's see, I'll give it a few more seconds to see if any more are popping up. We love to learn with and from each other. But these are some great ways that we can start to provide choice as we're differentiating for our students. Yeah, role play, uh, different roles found in real life experiences. Exactly, Cynthia, that's a great example about providing that choice. But at the same time, you know, empowering students um, to, for them to take ownership of their learning, all of those things that we talked about with student agency. Y'all are all um, sharing great examples and ideas. Hopefully you can also take one of these ideas back to your uh, setting and uh, implement it and try it to see how it works for you and your students or your learners. All right, we're going to start to wrap this up now. So as you can see, there are several ways that we can provide choice while we're differentiating for student agency. While we're empowering our students, we're helping them take owner of learning, of the learning um, through this whole process. Also, just an FYI, this is part of a three-part series on differentiation. So last spring, uh, we polled everyone who's attended GWPD and the top three topics they wanted for professional development um, were instructional technology, which we did the last three sessions, differentiation and scaffolding, which will be today and the next uh, two sessions that we offer, and then assessment, which is what we'll do in late November and December. So this is part of our, the first in our series of differentiation. So with that information, um, don't forget, before we wrap this up at the end, don't forget to join us next week, well, not, I should say in two weeks, on October the 8th. We're going to talk about unleashing potential differentiation for struggling learners. So this session, we're going to explore scaffolding techniques to provide targeted support. We're going to dive into pre-teaching and reteaching strategies for mastery and talk about some formative assessments where we can not only identify, but also address learning gaps. So you can scan that QR code to sign up for that. I'll also put the link in the chat so that you can sign up for that ahead of time. Otherwise, you will be seeing it on our social media uh, going forward. The next thing is um, today in about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, we have a webinar that's focused on ag education called Beyond the Textbook, Making ag, ag Education Interactive. If you love instructional strategies as much as I do, hang around because even if you don't teach an ag course, we're still gonna cover and you're going to walk away with eight instructional strategies that you can use with any textbook, any content, any age of learner. So you'll find that in the chat or I'll give you just a second to scan that as well. We have lots of resources to share today. So that's an ag, focus on six ag textbooks, but eight instructional strategies that go with any content, any age group. Also, as before we wrap up for today, um, certificate of attendances are usually emailed. Sometimes there's some difficulty with those and we wanna make sure you get them. So we have created a Google Drive folder that houses all of the office hour certificates. So if you need yours, you can scan that QR code that is on the screen right there, or you can click on the link that is in the chat to access a fillable um, certificate of attendance for today. While we're at that, these webinars are recorded. And once again, they are shared post webinar, uh, sometimes due to Microsoft um, permissions, you may not be receiving those recordings and we want to make sure that you receive those recordings. So you can scan the QR code, click on the link in the chat. Also, when you're there, it's a YouTube playlist. Make sure that you click on the subscribe and subscribe to the Goodhart Wilcox YouTube channel so that you'll be notified when we update our playlist. And with that, um, we're always improving at GW, and part of that improving is getting feedback from you. And so we would love feedback from you on today's session, on the topic that we covered, on your growth of your knowledge that you gained from the beginning of the session to the end, 
Also, any ideas that you have about implementing differentiation uh, in your classroom based on content, process, product, or environment. So if you wouldn't mind sharing, you can scan that QR code or you can click on the link in the chat as well. Uh, we are always improving and always love feedback at GW. And I have a few more slides, so we're going to keep going. We have about nine minutes. Also, because we realize there are a lot of links that have been shared today in the file section of this webinar and in the Google Drive with the certificates, you'll find a document that houses all of the links. It's going to have the link to our evaluation, the link to our playlist, the link to certificates, and the link to register for future GW Office Hour webinars. So make sure that you find that document um, to make sure you have all the resources from today in one easy place as well. So that should be in the file section of this webinar's information. As you can see, next to chat, you'll see file. You can click right there. And as we start to wrap this up, we hope that you're leaving this webinar with an increased understanding of student agency, of students owning their own learning, empowering them to own their own, own their own learning, that you have developed some differentiation strategies, some new ones, and that you have uh, some enhanced student engagement ideas. So feel free to reach out. If you have questions, concerns, ideas, feel free to email or call or text me we love to interact with you um, on a more personal level than through the webinar. And we want to thank you for being here today. Hope you get your seven minutes back um, for today. And if you want to see us again, we'll be back on at three o'clock. The link is in the chat. Um, can't wait to see you at the next webinar on October the 8th and have a really great afternoon and we'll see you soon.